Hello and very good afternoon to everyone attending the session today. Uh, this time, welcome on behalf of the GATE Academy. And this time, we are again with a quiz on general aptitude, but of course, with a mixed bag of questions. It's not topic specific. So, once again, uh, would be competing with the best of the brains here, and we'll see how you go ahead and perform. Uh, before we start, again, I would just like to share uh, the rules and instructions related to playing the quiz. So the first thing is to play the quiz. Uh, again, you can see the link given on the top of the screen that you need to access. So it's very simple. Just please go ahead and work out on the link uh, so that you can play the point. Okay. Few interesting features about the quiz is there is no negative marking. So if you can relax, you can definitely get the questions. No negative points to it. Okay. Again, number of points per question will be displayed along with the question. So uh, not equal weightage for all questions. Questions are of varying difficulty from average to standard. So in that case, you can always see the number of points aligned to each question. Moving on. Uh, interesting feature here. Of course, it's understandable. Tough for the questions and more the points. Okay. And finally, uh, this one is an interesting feature in case if you're new or playing the quiz for the first time, the faster you answer, higher you score. So directly proportional to the time that you are, or rather inversely, right? To the time that you're investing to solve the question. So once again, you can see the link on the top window and no negative markings. Uh, question points would be mentioned for each question. And of course, with increasing difficulty level, you have more points. And the faster you answer, higher the score. So before we proceed on with the quiz, I hope there are many participants joining us. I'll wait for maybe another few minutes so that maybe a few seconds rather, so that you can ask your friends to join and make it uh, maybe a bit exciting for all of us. It's always good to compete with each other when it comes down to logic, it comes to puzzles and so on. You can also interact with me using the live chat window. Any questions, any queries, you're welcome. Okay. Oh, smile. It's good to see that. Anyways, are we ready? Uh, do you think we are ready to go ahead? Should we? Okay, maybe we can give it a try. Let's still wait for some time for your friends to join. This time I'm expecting more number of participants to be playing the quiz. Always good to test your logic in live situations. Okay. Okay. That's good. Welcome through. King. Okay. Uh, nice ID. Uh, I can see more participants, but you're not joining in. What's wrong? There is no negative points. Nothing, nothing to lose here. So just participate. Okay, now now it's improving. Good to see. It's always uh, is an opportunity, probably for the first time, provided by uh, especially uh, an educational company where we are conducting a live Q quiz and interacting with engineers across the country. So uh, excellent initiative by the Gate Academy, and I'm sure that you will appreciate this. A uh, very uh, innovative thinking and um, what they have done here. Okay, so we have got quite a few participants. Can we go ahead with the quiz then? Are you ready? All the best to everyone. Equations forms a fundamental step in your aptitude preparation, whatever aptitude test you're preparing for. Be careful with the question. It's not very difficult, however, you have to think a little bit while you're solving it. I'm sure I'll get good answers. Decent time given to you. I'm sure that you would be able to manage inside uh, within this time, time limit given to you. There are a few 
set rules that we apply in case of equations. We always start thinking that if there is one variable, I need one equation to solve it. Two variables, I need two equations to solve it. Three variables, I need three equations to solve it, and so on. But however, apt equations might be uh, made in such a way that they can be answered without uh, having the sufficient set of equations because the questions will be designed in such a manner. So before you take a decision based on whatever you have learned, be careful, okay? And time's up, fine. Let's see, go ahead to the leaderboard. Only one correct answer, Bhagyashree Guru, good, excellent. Keep, keep going, come on. I'm sure rest of you will catch up. Let's go move on to the next one. A little bit of permutation combination in practice. Not very difficult, but of course, concept-based question. Whether you're preparing for gate app, any other app, remember one thing, questions, your preparation has to be on concepts and fundamentals. Uh, whether you know the shortcuts, not material or not very relevant in long term. But once you know that your concepts are rock solid, your fundamentals are good, you can always build upon. And that's the key to success when it comes to gate. I'm talking about all subjects, all streams, whenever I'm talking about this, this concept. So first, the concepts and the fundamentals from each topic, from each subject has to be rock solid. And once that is done, I can build up step by step onto that. So always remember concepts and fundamentals first. As a gate aspirant, don't be excited just by looking at direct shortcuts which are applicable to specific questions. That does not help. Looks difficult. I don't know. Nothing in the chat yet. You can always interact with me in the chat window. Okay, let's once again go ahead to the leaderboard and check how does it look like. Nandini, well, that was quick. Okay, good point. So we have top three here. Fine, good going. Ready for the next one? Percentages are part of arithmetic and arithmetic and integral part of your active preparation. Especially if you are preparing yourself for government exams, whether it be SSCJ, whether it be RRBJ, remember, chunk of questions. Even if you analyze the gate papers, there has been more weightage. I'm talking about general aptitude. More weightage has always been in the arithmetic section. So we're talking about ratio proportions. We're talking about percentage, time work, time speed, distance, averages, followed by algebra. Even if you go to the one of the most challenging tests uh, in AP, which is CAT, you will see the same dominance of arithmetic, chunk of the questions from arithmetic followed by algebra. Unless your fundamentals and concepts are clear with this question, you will definitely find this question a bit challenging. So I repeat, if you're a gate aspirant, a very serious gate aspirant, make sure that your concepts and fundamentals are very strong. Once it's done, it's very easy to build on. Not easy as it looks like. We still have 20 seconds to go. I expect maybe more correct answers this time. A manageable question, especially if your concepts on percentages is clear. We're closing in on time. Okay. Okay. Not bad. Let's once again and go ahead. Surprisingly. Good. Bottom good. Okay. So a uh, big leap for you. Okay. And there's still many competitive uh, uh, contestants in the fight. So it's still a very close leap for contest. There are still a few more questions to go. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, halfway through. Interesting one. When I talk about puzzles, especially for an engineering aspirant, you're preparing for campus recruitment tests, you're preparing for interviews, 
these kind of questions are very standard and common across all kinds of tests and interviews that you may come across as an engineering candidate. Looks like permutation combination question, but one hint that I would like to give, it is not. So use your common sense, use your analytical skills that you have learned as an engineer, you have acquired over these years while pursuing engineering. Focus more on logic and your analytical skill sets. Not as difficult as it looks, but yes, slightly confusing. And we, okay. But fortunately, I've got one correct answer. Let's see who's leading it. Very well. Uh, the contest is exciting. Like Nandini, like at one point of time, we are seeing Vageshi on the leaderboard. At that point of time, it's Gautam. Now it's Nandini. We still have two more questions to go. Let's go ahead and see how does it proceed for all of you. A very simple average uh, question, average speed concept question based on time, speed, and distance. What happens? We are out of touch with time, speed, and distance, or we are out of touch with arithmetic. These kind of questions trouble us because last time probably I solved this question was maybe in class uh, eight, and now there is a big gap. We have forgotten the concepts or the approaches to solve these kind of questions. Yeah, okay, okay. Hi to you as well. I did not see your chat. I just, just checked it right now. Okay, 40 seconds to go. Think over. I've given uh, sufficient time to answer this question. If I know a shortcut, excellent. Even if I do not, don't know a shortcut, concepts is what I can bank on. So even if I try to work it out normally, I would hardly require maybe 60 seconds to go ahead with this. Twenty seconds more. If from an uh, if if you are very much interested in your campus uh, placements, then remember time speed distance is one of the most challenging topics that could be a part of your happy questions under campus recruitment tests. Okay, enough time, and that's the result. We have got so many correct answers. We still have one more question to go. I always like to keep the quizzes short so that we can discuss more about the questions and the concepts inside it. The options are given in that last line. And the first two conditions that statement one and statement two are the question conditions. So analyze it once again, a very basic question on logical deductions. You can also say it as non-verbal. Uh, it's, it's a reasoning based question. Even if you want to classify it under verbal reasoning, though it does not, but it's a logical deduction based question. Just try to analyze the conditions, relate them logically and come down to a conclusion. Question says logically inferred. So once you logically connect the statements, the best possible conclusion that can be derived after combining the statements logically, that is exactly what the question is asking you. In seconds to go. I'm sure that uh, this question is again, not that troublesome as, as much as you are thinking. Well played, Nandini. Congratulations. And definitely to everyone else as well. Gautam was very closely fought. Good to see that. EV as well. Okay. Obviously, you started off well. What happened later? Anyways, now 
we can probably once again congratulations sandini and we'll try to go ahead with the explanations and concepts beneath those questions i hope you can uh, see the screen Sudhir team was very fast in congratulating Gandhi once again. Congratulations! Now let's go on to the questions. Uh, very standard AP question where you see insufficient number of equations. Now the question is very basic. Writing equation is not at all a challenge. You straight away write down the first two equations, and then you start realizing, okay, I'm one shot. There are three variables, and I've got two equations. So mathematically, what I've learned so far, my instant responses cannot be determined. But as I said, the questions are. Made in such a way that you can probably go ahead and solve with a little bit of substitutions. So what we did here, we simply multiplied this first equation with two, as you can see that. We multiplied this equation number one two times, and we get four a plus six a plus eight x equals to one one two. Subtracting these two equations, I can clearly see that I get the value of n. Now, see, my target is one apple. Uh, I just avoided four for oranges. It might confuse me with zero and five mangoes. This is what my target is. We have already identified that five mangoes would be twenty rupees. Uh, I'm sure this is easy to understand. Now, this is something which we are trying to deal with. What happens in this kind of questions? You may not get individual values because the equations are not sufficient. I need one more equation to do it. But just based on substitutions, I could have easily worked this out. Now, once I substitute the value of four, m equals to four in equation one, three m would be twelve. Then two a plus four x is forty-four, and a plus two x is twenty-two. So I don't even need to bother about the individual values of a and x. That is exactly what the missing part was: one a plus two x. So this part costs twenty-two, and the five mangoes part costs twenty. As a result, the total cost should have been forty-two. Anyone who has a doubt, you can use the live chat window to type. If you have any doubts, any questions related to this, no, can we move on? Okay, let's go into the next one. Interesting question on uh, again concepts of computation and combination. Now, once again, when I'm trying to think fast, usually only two match predictions come in my mind. That is win and loss. We many a times I get an answer where you ignore draw. So draw or tie is also a result. There are three ways to predict a match. There are twelve matches to be played in the league. So the first match can be predicted in three ways. The second match can be predicted in three ways, and this goes on. Each match can be predicted in three ways up to the twelfth match. So total predictions that we have is three to the power twelve. Now, say for example, in any of the matches that you're predicting, only one of them can be correct, right? Either it's win, loss, or draw. So in this case, if I assuming that only one can be correct, then I can make incorrect choices in two possible ways. The exact result is win. If I say loss, it's an incorrect prediction. If I say draw, it's still an incorrect prediction. So each match can be predicted incorrectly in two ways, and the logic continues the same way, and this goes up to twelfth time. So all incorrect predictions could be possible in two to the power twelve ways. Total correction is this: using the basic concepts. Whenever I do a total minus all incorrect, I should always get at least one correct prediction. So in this case, answer would be option B. Any doubts related to this? You can still use the live uh, chat window to interact with me if you have any questions related to the questions or any other uh, logic related issues that you're facing here. This one is a very important question, keeping in mind, uh, especially keeping in mind campus interviews and and tests, of course. And Gate has been using these kind of questions a lot. Uh, of course, I'm not talking about this question, but there were few very popular campus-level questions which have been used by IT companies and non-IT companies during campus recruitment. The exact same questions were used by Gate at a later stage. I'm talking about 2018, 19, 20, even 21. Many puzzles 
they have copied or they have reused i won't say copied is not a good word they have reused the same kind of logical puzzles so this is one of very probable questions that you might see in a gate test in future now the logic behind this is uh, i hope the question is clear to you i've got fresh fruits and you have got dry fruits so if you are getting confused you can just assume a fruit there same it maybe it's a grape so fresh grapes definitely water content is high and resins it's so uh, more of solid matter less of water content so the concept behind this question is while we are drying out while you are drying the fruits water will evaporate so this is a very important concept that i have written here in case if you find it difficult you can always rank upon this water evaporate but solid matter remains the same once you understand this concept we are just trying to break up that uh, fresh fruits percentage concentration and dilution we can see that 20% is solid matter the dry fruit content or the fruit pulp and 80% is water similarly in dry fruits we have got 20% water and 80% is solid matter now most importantly you are making dry fruits from fresh fruits so the solid matter has to be same in both the cases i am making dry fruits from fresh fruits so how much is the solid content available in the fresh fruits it's 20% of fresh or 20% of 80 so that 20% of 80 which is 16 kg i can specifically again if you wish you can write it down this 16 kg fruit pulp or solid matter also needs to be present in case of dry fruit but the only thing is this time it becomes 80% of the total weight why because water level has dropped so once you understand this i can easily write that 20% of fresh fruits is equal to 80% of dry fruits and then we can easily equate the equation and we get d equals to or the weight of dry fruits equal to 20 anyone who has a doubt here please go ahead you can use your live chat window to interact with me in case if you have one doesn't seem like okay can we proceed then fine this one is an interesting one so uh, probably only one correct as far as i remember let's try and understand now i hope the question is clear to you you're blindfolded you're randomly picking up the number of uh, gloves could be gloves gloves or socks is a very common interview question as well now you be see a big sample size and look at the options they have been given in factorial forms this is just to confuse that i the moment i see factorials and those forms my mind starts diverting towards permutation and combination that was the only purpose why it was given so uh, we'll just try and avoid what is the best case i'm blindfolded i pick up two and both of them are red right both of them are red and red else both of them are black this is the best case this is the best case minimum but this is the best case will this happen every time not guaranteed question says be very careful in this kind of questions there is a word like ensure ensure means you have to guarantee pick up certain number of socks that you get a pair of the same color you have to guarantee and we just need one pair of gloves of the same color so it could be red it could be black so best case is not the answer because this is not going to happen every time so we are trying to identify the worst case what is the worst case the first pick is red and the second pick is black or the first pick is black and the second pick is red so this is the worst case we are not finding a pair either it's red blue or it's blue red now when you are going to pick the third one what color it will be it will either be red or blue so if you get red you have a pair if you get black you still have a pair so it'll be for black similarly the first was black second was red the third one that i'm going to pick will either be red or black if it's a red i still have a pair if it's a black i still have a pair that means i just need to pick three gloves to make sure that i have a pair of same color okay you welcome shivani uh, this is what we are talking about here now now the moment your minds okay you know the answer is three now you start looking at the options and anyone who is trying to move very fast would skate away take none of these be very careful the options were picked here so that you make a silly mistake look at the second option factorial 3 factorial 3 is 6 and factorial 2 is 2 this is the option that is supposed to be a answer 
so uh, of course you have answered i'm sure you have used the correct logic and the thought process to answer this question in case if you did then uh, excellent this is a very standard interview question also uh, a probable apt question i hope this is clear anyone who has a doubt here you can type in you can use the live chat and type in if you have any doubt here to this okay doesn't seem like it's go ahead this one is relatively simple compared to the other questions based on very simple logic of uh, average speed now uh, in school if you remember we used to take x just to move faster because there was a timer going on i don't want to frame equations what i'm doing is i'm assuming the distance instead of x i'm trying to assume it to be 240 the reason 240 is divisible by 60 and 80 both of the numbers so either you pick up the lcm or you pick up any multiple of 60 and 80 done now in at traveling at an average speed of 60 i take 4 hours to complete the journey or the train takes 4 hours to complete the journey traveling at 80 the train takes 3 hours to complete the journey now this train or at this speed we are the train is taking more time why because it's stopping so the journey should have been ideally completed in 3 but no it's taking 4 why because it stopped during the journey that means how much time did it stop definitely it stopped for an hour so now we are using or we are thinking unitary method so in a journey in a total journey of 4 hours the train stops for 1 hour question says average stoppage time per hour that means in per hour it is going to stop for 1/4 of an hour and that is 15 minutes anyone who has a doubt here okay uh, now i see your uh, chat okay the last question right i mean the that puzzle question related to the pair of gloves correct anyone please confirm using the chat finally uh, we have broken this someone has started to chat okay is the last case clear or uh, maybe one more question and then we can uh, i can take up your doubts this one is simple a uh, lot of sentences but those sentences has logical information in it the best way to address these kind of questions is convert extract the information using mathematical symbols or in your own way operators anything the way you are comfortable but you don't want to analyze the lines always remember try to extract the information given so it's very easy to extract that the first one says cloudy days tend to be windier than sunny days the easiest way to express that was windier means more windy so i thought the best way was c is greater than s and similarly foggy days tend to less to be less windy than cloudy days c f is less than c that means c is greater than f once we get these two conditions it's just a matter of time that you will get the answers correct now look at the first option it says sunny is less windy than foggy in our information there is no comparison between s and f so i cannot conclude that right so for the time being this is not the best option i can keep it aside same problem in option b sunny windier than foggy once again they are comparing s and f and i don't have an evidence so as of now not the best option third one foggy and cloudy in the third option they say foggy and cloudy windier than sun cloudy is windier than sunny clearly given but foggy and sunny again we don't have a comparison yes i'll go back to the previous question just give me give me the uh, let me complete this and so we are only left with the last option we'll just give it a check foggy and sunny less windy than cloudy it's clearly uh, uh, you can infer it from the information that we have extracted foggy and sunny less windy than cloudy because cloudy is greater than s and c is greater than f that means definitely option d fits in the best possible way when it comes down to logical inference okay would you like to go back to that uh, blindfolded question i guess is that the question uh, you have a doubt with you can use the chat to confirm please anyone i'm waiting for your response okay uh, maybe yes this first read the question carefully question says you have to ensure so 
okay uh, you have typed in like uh, rr or bb can also be cases then right if rr and bb are also possible cases but will this rr that means two attempt when you say rr or bb means you are picking up two gloves now if you pick up two gloves any time blindfolded will you guarantee get a pair of the same color in this question in this case you pick up two gloves blindfolded can you guarantee me each time you will get a pair of the same color please confirm just by typing a y for yes and n for no see you are a doubt related to this right so my question is if you are picking up two gloves two gloves can you guarantee that every time i pick up two i will get a pair of the same color not possible right that is the best case but question says you have to ensure that means you have to guarantee that you are picking up n number of gloves and you will get a pair of same color so two is not the answer that is the best case in these case question we have to identify the worst case gate has also come up a question based on this kind of logic about this best case and worst case it was a 2012 two marks question related to nine identical balls a very common uh, interview level question as well as an apt question so maybe we can include that in our next quiz i already give you a hint in this case so two is not the answer now i will have to check the worst case and i hope the worst case is clear now okay ev says now the question has been cleared okay any more doubts that you have it was so good to interact with you on youtube chat as well good to see you participate next time i expect more of you and i also would like the suggestion your suggestion should i for these kind of happy quizzes should i mix up the topics or should i be topic specific you can just uh, leave in your comments so that maybe i can design and think about my next quiz in a better way so should i mix up the topics mix up the questions or should i be very topic specific while well, well, while we are playing a quiz anyone your thoughts and comment okay you're welcome anyone if you want to suggest anything topic specific okay we can definitely do topic specific but the point why we do uh, why we generalize why we mix up uh, you can okay now there are uh, different suggestions no no worries we can always mix it up we can also have topic specific the reason why uh, i avoid topic specific is okay we can do one topic specific any any test that you're going to appear right any test is rrb the simplest of the lot rrb okay or ssc j you're writing an apt test you will never get topic specific questions one after the other so you will always have to switch your mind this is also a suggestion while you're practicing once you have completed your fundamentals you have revised everything now you are ready don't pick up five questions from the same topic and practice start mixing up because you're that exactly what happens at gate you won't get back to back questions five questions from the same topic from the same chapter it does not happen that way so we also need to train our brains to mix i i want to move from permutation to probably linear equations from linear equations i want to move to inequalities from there i may be i need to move to geometry so this is a very good training exercise and this is the temperament this is the match temperament when i say match that is the real gate test or any other test that you are appearing for so once you are done with the basics now you know that your preparation is done start using these techniques start using maybe two three questions from engineering mathematics different areas then again three questions from some other topic it could be fluid mechanics it could be set of materials or anything based on your subjects and streams so start mixing up because that is the true temperament that will teach you how to build up the temperament and the stamina back to back questions from time and work it's easy for me to think why i know all the questions are from time and work but the moment i see a permutation combination question after time and work it it creates doubt it challenges me so this is a good way okay we will next time i'll pick up one topic specific test and then again if there is a chance then we'll again mix up as well okay thank you for all your inputs thank you so much i wish to see you i wish to see more participation from your side 
and thank you for making this quiz uh, so exciting and interactive. That's all for the day. Goodbye.